Welcome back to FDVN's channel. In today's video, we will introduce a new vocabulary lesson on the topic of the law of damages international sales. A claim for damages can arise in several types of case which include situations involving a breach of contract, problems of validity of the contract, and pre-contractual relationships. This work is only concerned with claims arising from a breach of contract. To have the right to claim damages for breach of contract, the injured party must prove that the other party has committed a breach of contract, it has suffered loss, recognized by the instruments as recoverable, and the alleged loss has occurred as a consequence of the breach. The loss will be recovered only to the extent to which it was foreseeable by the breaching party at the time of the conclusion of the contract and the burden of proving foreseeability lies with the injured party. The injured party is also required to take all reasonable steps to mitigate its loss and this requirement is a further limitation on the award of damages. Once it is known for what losses damages need to be awarded, those losses need to be translated into monetary terms. Labels used to describe this process are many and include such terms as quantum, quantification, measure, assessment, and calculation. The purpose of this chapter is to identify and discuss various methods of translating losses into money terms which can be used under the international instruments. Before embarking upon an examination of the specific methods of calculating damages, it may be helpful to briefly outline a general structure of the instrument's damages provisions insofar as it is relevant to the issue of calculation. The structure of all three instruments in this respect is very similar, as they all provide two specific formula for calculating damages in cases where the contract has been avoided, terminated. The two formulae are well known to domestic legal systems. In contrast with some legal systems which generally prefer the due date of performance, the instruments, concrete, and abstract formula refer to the time of the avoidance of the contract. The question is whether in anticipatory breach cases it is appropriate to rely on these formulae. Although there has been little discussion of this issue in legal literature, no one thus far seems to have doubted the relevance and the correctness of using these formulae and there is a good reason why this is so. As discussed in detail above, both formulae are in line, albeit to a different extent, with their duty to mitigate which should equally apply to anticipatory breach situations. These formulae can be said to reflect, again, to a different extent, the conduct expected of the injured party, regardless of whether an anticipatory or an actual breach has been committed. Therefore, there is little doubt that these formulae are relevant for anticipatory breach cases. 